All right, guys, so if you take anything away from this series, I think this is gonna be the most useful section for you, okay? So take this away, all right? For the mountain hunter, a lot of times we're talking about having minimal gear, but wanting some utility, all right? So I'm gonna show you a safe way to drop gear off of an anchored position, and all you need is a static rope, okay? For most mountain hunting scenarios, probably a rope that's, you know, 60 to, you know, 120 feet or so, is gonna is gonna suffice all right so um what i'll show you here is that it you you do eat up a little bit of rope in the setup uh, but you don't need any gear all right so the first thing we're going to do is i'm going to show you guys how to make a uh, impromptu harness with just a rope okay and uh, the commercial variation of this is usually called a swami belt but the actual rope version um, is called a bowline on a coil, all right? So you're gonna wanna get the rope up here. You want quite a bit of tail because you're gonna need that to wrap around your body. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna do coils around your body right at the hip bones, all right? And the more coils you do, obviously the more rope it uses, but the more comfortable and safe it is too, okay? So for me, uh, I'll show you whenever I use this, I'm, I'm not going to fall on it, okay? Falling on a swami belt or a bowline on a coil is pretty darn dangerous, particularly with a static rope. So I'm using it for support. I'm going to I'm gonna anchor with this harness and I'm going to have constant pressure on it. So I don't need a ton of coils. I'm going to put in, I'm going to put in three coils and I'm going to stack them. I'm not going to overlap them. All right. And then I'm going to come to my end. I'm going to tie the end to the, uh, the gear dropping part of my rope with a bowline. Okay, okay, so there's my bowline on a coil, all right, harness. Okay, so the next part is, is very important that you do right, guys. I'm going to anchor to this tree, but I have to use a knot that makes me independent of the rest of my rope because I'm gonna use the rest of my rope to drop gear so there's gonna be tension on it. The last thing I wanna do is think I'm anchoring to something and then I lose my gear when I'm dropping it via, via a body belay and all of a sudden I hit the tree and go down with the gear. So you need to use a knot that's gonna make that section of the rope independent, all right? So what I'm gonna use is a clove hitch and you're gonna need the end of your, your rope, the other end of your rope All right, so on a clove hitch around something like this, first thing you're gonna do is take all your rope, go around the object here, okay? And you're gonna have the rope crossed there, right, your first wrap, okay? So then you're gonna go again, and then underneath, itself okay and there's your clove hitch all right so the advantage of the clove hitch is I'm independent once it gets tight I'm independent okay of the rest of the rope all right so I'll show you that here okay so I'm independent of the rest of the rope okay so the other nice thing about it is I can adjust really quickly all right without take without undoing the knot like i don't particularly like this position i'm a little far from the anchor from my mindset right and i don't have really good footing to do the to do the body belay off of so what i'm going to do is i'm going to come up to the clove hitch here i'm just going to push in you know where i feel comfortable and i kind of want to be like right in here all right and then i'm going to grab the other end and snug it up okay now i'm tighter I didn't have to undo the knot or anything, okay? So that's nice about, that's a nice thing about the uh, clove hitch. And so I'll just mention something here. Let's just say we're not, we're not dropping gear. I'll give you another very really practical situation for this. Let's say you've killed a bull elk or, you know, or, you know, a tar in some rocky, nasty terrain or whatever, but you've got to work on it there, right? You're going to quarter it and cape it there, but you want to tie off the animal and you want to tie up your, yourself for safety. I've seen, a lot of times what guys will do, they'll do a half-assed knot on some sort of object, a rock or a tree, and then they'll take the tail end of their rope and they'll tie it to the bull elk or whatever. What they don't realize is when they're working on that elk, if it rolls, 
they're attached to it, okay? They're gonna slam into the anchor and then end up going down the mountain with the bull elk. A good um, option for you is to use this clove hitch. Do a clove hitch, make yourself a harness, okay? Probably if you're working on an animal, you're gonna give yourself a little more slack just so you're comfortable, but you can, you can work more slack through the clove hitch as you work. And then take your other line, which is now independent, and you can tie your animal to it, okay? So this is a perfect, a perfect support, and all you need is a rope but it's a perfect support for those really steep, nasty um, situations where you wanna work on an animal and you have no other choice but to work on it in a steep environment, okay? But anyways, we're, we're gonna keep going with the whole uh, dropping gear, meat, or capes uh, uh, idea, all right? Okay, so when, I, when I'm gonna set up for my body belay to drop gear, cape, meat, whatever, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set my anchor up, okay? My anchor line, it's gonna be on the same side of my body as the line is the, that's going down to my gear, okay? You want the tension part to be in line with the anchor, all right? So here's the tension line. I like to get all my rope that's gonna go down. I don't like it wrapped around my legs, so I'll usually jump over it and get it behind me. But you end up in the same situation. Breaking arm here, tension line here, anchor here okay so you can see how I'm independent all right I'm independent of this line my anchor is okay all right and then just a quick review over uh, body belaying I don't want to collapse my arm in here okay all right I want to keep it out here relatively straight and then when I break like let's say my gear pops over a rim I can break like this okay break like that and from that angle you probably can't see it but you really want to get the arm across your body all right elbow to like right below your your pecs like right in your sternum is what i like so i kind of i like to straight arm it just so i don't get caught back here and then across like that to stop to stop the gear okay and that's what i'll use and then if i you know if i hit this anchor no big deal because i'm supported all right so guys that's the uh gear minimalist uh dropping gear with it with an anchor okay so that's that's kind of a really happy medium deal where you've got minimal gear involved you could have that with you in the mountains, but you're pretty darn safe and you can get some stuff done. All right guys, so I'm gonna go over just basic uh, anchoring. And in terms of using ropes in the mountains on mountain hunts, most of the time that's gonna be on trees, okay? So you obviously wanna anchor to trees that can hold your body weight and then some, or the gear, uh, whatever you're dropping, whatever the anchor's gonna hold. And so be real conservative, you know. A tree like this, I mean, you're talking basically this big around, it's live, healthy, well-rooted, um, everything else. I would be, I'd be comfortable repelling off this and surely uh, be comfortable dropping gear off of it. But just as a, a backup, I could always do two trees. I'll show you one and then I'll show you how to equalize the anchor on two, two trees just to be extra safe. But a tree like this, it's well-rooted. It, I mean, it's, it's gonna be pretty, pretty darn safe, right? There's a little risk in everything, but, but that'd be a, a safe solution. And just, just so you guys uh, understand, I'm gonna show you how to lift and drop gear on an anchor where you're not tied into the same anchor, but just be mindful that you still need to be cautious. Just because you're not attached to that anchor and directly depending your life on the anchor, you got to remember that if an anchor breaks when you're dropping gear, it can be, be life-threatening also because you could have like a lot of kinetic energy, something whipping around a big long rope on it, okay? So you need to make sure the anchor's solid if it's just for dropping gear or if it's for, for your life on a, on a rappel. So generally on a tree like this, I'm going to use a sling and I'll show you guys a quick, quick knot. I keep my slings all tied up in loops just because that's going to be 90% of the scenario is just a loop that I'm going to girth hitch on a tree. But the knot that you're going to want to use on this, on the, attaching the ends of sling material, is what's called a water knot. And it's an easy knot, but you kind of want to just be cautious because you want everything to stay flat. Just take your sling, do basically an overhand with a fairly long tail. The one thing about a water knot is you don't want real short tails. Okay, so you just a, a knot like that. And take your other end of your sling, make sure everything's flat. Just follow it back. Okay? So follow it back, keeping it flat the whole time. Okay? 
Okay, and again, it's key that you have enough tail on that end also, right? And then just snug that up where everything's nice and flat. And that's the best way and the most common way that you're gonna see slings attached. The other one that's super easy, I'll just, I might as well just show it to you because it's, it's totally idiot proof. And that's just what they call the overhead, overhand bend. And that's it, take your two ends. Again, make them flat so your knot turns out good. Your two ends like this and just do an overhand knot with both of them, okay? Same deal, keep everything flat and nice, okay? And then make sure you got plenty of tail. Like I, I like six inches of tail or, or so, four to six inches at least, all right? And lock it in there and get it real, real snug, okay? And then this sling, the easiest way to deploy a sling on a tree is just to girth hitch it like this. So, so double the sling up, put it around the tree like that, and then put the sling through itself, okay? So this is a girth hitch. And I'll just forewarn you, in like the climbing community, this is kind of a no-no because it because they leave a lot of their anchors up in areas that they get climbed a lot and it's hard on the on, hard on the trees. But for what our what we're doing, this mountain hunting rope stuff, this is probably your most practical and easy solution. I mean, look at it, it's pretty hard to fuck it up, right? Um, so that's a good thing in these situations, all right? So once you have the girth hitch, you can just put a carabiner on the sling like this. And on any of these anchors, you should be using a locking carabiner uh, for sure, okay? Even though it's just dropping gear, you're not necessarily repelling off of it. If it were a case that uh, you were gonna end up repelling off of it, which I'm not gonna cover in this video, um, you know, you should probably take a course if you're gonna get into repelling. But you might, if you get into a scenario where you're gonna drop gear and then you're gonna repel on the line, you know, it, it kind of makes sense. If you've already got it all rigged up, you might as well drop down the line yourself. Um, but if you got that, if you have that skill set, you might consider using one of these wrap rings instead, a rappel ring instead. And when you build your sling, when you tie your sling together, you can put that wrap ring in there, okay? And then you can you can use that ring instead of a instead of a locking carabiner. And the advantage of that is that when you get to the bottom of your rappel, uh, you're you're gonna pull your rope obviously through the ring, but this gear is gonna stay, right? So you've donated that to to the mountain, so it's a little bit cheaper uh, to to give up a wrap ring instead of a carabiner. Like I said, for mountain hunts, this is a scenario you're probably not gonna. You know, this isn't like hopefully this isn't a daily thing for you when you're in the mountain hunt. You're probably doing something wrong if it is. So it's not that big a deal to give up a give up a locking carabiner every once in a while. All right. So that's a single tree uh, anchor with a sling. All right guys, so one thing I'll mention before I show you a cordelette uh, anchor on two trees is I'm sure um, that you're probably thinking, well, as a mountain hunter, hunter, you're wanting to minimize gear and all this stuff, yeah, you, I mean, basically so far the scenarios I've showed you, all you really need is a static rope and then a sling for this anchor and then a carabiner, a locking carabiner. You're probably thinking, well, what if I just ran my rope instead of through a carabiner, I ran it just straight through the sling? Straight through, straight through this, right? And so what, I, what I'll say is it's not considered good practice, but I could see mountain guys doing it. Uh, and it's, gonna, and it, it's amazing what these slings can resist, but just realize that you're gonna put a, a lot of friction on this and you just need to be really careful, all right? People do do it. There's, there's no doubt about it that they, they, they do do it. And the other thing guys will do is that even if they don't have a sling, they'll actually just run the rope uh, over, the, over the tree. Some guys will actually repel that way. Again, it's considered a, a, a not a safe practice because you're creating a lot, of, a lot of friction, all right? But in scenarios where you're limited on gear, those are options for you to make a decision on based on the risk that you're gonna wanna take, all right? All right, guys, so I'm gonna quickly show you a quarter lead anchor on two, on two trees. And uh, 
you're gonna find probably that you know a little chunk of this cord light. I mean, it's basically just low low diameter static line. Um, it's gonna have more utility for you in the mountains than uh, than the slings, but it just takes a little more time to deploy. And the reason that there's more utility with it is for the same weight and for the same bulk and everything. You can carry a lot longer length of it. All right. Okay. So I've got it here, and then I'll untie it. And basically, let's say that I didn't want to trust this tree. I wanted to back it up with another tree. All right, so with the cordelette, if you want a little extra protection, you can run it uh, doubled up around the trees. Um, but if you need the length, you can run a single line around the trees, okay? So I'm wrapping both trees. And some guys will think, well, at this point, we can do an overhead hand bend. Okay, big big long tails. Just do an overhand bend here. Work that out. Whenever I do my overhand bends, I'm just paranoid, so I do another one three or four inches up the rope. Kind of as a backup knot. Okay. So a lot of guys will think, okay, that's all I need to do. Just put a carabiner on that and that's the anchor. The problem with that is you really haven't gained that much. All right, guys, because if the line, if you know, if one side of the line breaks, the whole thing fails. All right, guys, so the best way to make an equalized and repetitive uh, anchor is grab the spot in between, okay? Pull it down here. So you've got both, both anchor, anchors. Look at where you're gonna be dropping the gear, okay? and try to get it where the tension is gonna equally uh, be dispersed on the two, the two trees. And then pull, go up the line here, have all the lines in your hand, and then what you can do is you can do a figure eight. Okay. And make sure those, those figure eight lines are not too bent up. You wanna kinda Make that knot nice and clean, okay? And so now you have an equalized anchor, all right? There's pressure on that tree, there's pressure, pressure on this tree, and this is a lot safer than just throwing the cordelette around the two and then, uh, and then locking in, all right? So once you have that at the anchor point, you can just stick a locking carabiner on there. All right, guys, so real quickly, I'll show you how to haul uh, uh, gear or quarters or capes or whatever up uphill okay and so one of the the simplest the simplest ways to deal with it and the most intuitive for guys is have a good anchor and then just use it as a pulley right okay as much as you can you'll see this is pretty this can be pretty tough so what you're gonna the ideal scenario is you can you want to use something that's gonna that's gonna capture the uh what you gain as you go okay so you don't have to hold the pressure the whole time all right guys so when we talk about just retaining progress as we as we haul gear up you know uh this like i mentioned you know this setup the problem is it's just going to be a lot of work because you can't you can't hold on to the progress first i'll show you just the mechanical way to do it this little micro traction it's another piece of gear but they're super lightweight you might consider having one if you're going to be exposed to this scenario a lot or if you just have a lot of other uses for a little pulley um, it's pretty simple to use. You just open it up, uh, insert your rope, close the device, and then you just put it on your locking carabiner on your anchor. All right. And then as you haul the gear up, <clears throat> when you pull up, it's going to hold it for you. Okay. So it basically just, just grabs a hold of the rope. So you don't always have to constantly be holding it. And I'll just mention something um, right, right now. This scenario where you're hauling gear up, again, it helps if you've got somebody down there below you, uh, just because if gear does get hung up when you're hauling it up, um, it would be, it's nice if you can maneuver it out of cracks or whatever, and a guy down there can help you. Um, the reality is, uh, unlike when you're dropping gear, that tends to be a little less likely, because a lot of times in the, hunting, in the hunting situations, you're dropping down in to usually get you know, a game animal that's fallen into a crack or something like that. Um, so you're just going to have to watch and be careful because you want to maneuver the, the, the gear or the meat and cape or whatever before it gets stuck. Once it's stuck, 
it's actually fairly difficult um, to get enough enough pressure on this to release it and drop it back down and then work it work it back up so you want to be preemptive about it you can deal with it but it's just a pain in the ass all right okay so that's your that's the mechanical way to do it the other uh, way to retain progress is via what's called an auto block and the way you do this just take your hauling uh, rope here as if you're just going to do the normal pulley thing and then what you're going to do is just with this little auto block and these are super lightweight it's a nice piece of gear to have put in your locking carabiner okay and then do what's called an auto block knot on this side okay it's basically wrapping the, the auto block around there okay and then the more wraps you do the uh, the more um, hold it's going to have, but at the same time, it's also going to be some resistance you have to deal with when you're when you're hauling. Okay, so you do that, and then what you're going to see is it's going to work the same way, right? You haul, and then it's going to grab. Okay, it's going to grab a hold of the rope there. So you haul the item up. Okay, and then that auto block is going to grab the rope for you and that friction is going to hold it okay so that's more of like a uh, just a less gear sensitive uh, method of doing it you can this is this little uh, you know some you can use a prusik or, or whatever that's that's already been sewn together but you can also just use another little piece of rope you have all right to do an auto block knot to to retain that okay so that's another option for you all right and then the next thing I'll show you is if it's just a crazy heavy uh, situation and it's like one guy, you can rig this up um, where it's a little bit, you have a little bit more of a mechanical advantage. And a lot of guys call this a Z rig. You're gonna put this rope here through your carabiner. And then what you're gonna do is another, another auto block knot on the rope here. and put it in your carabiner. A locking carabiner is ideal if you've got it, okay? And so now you've got really the other pulley uh, situations I showed you, really the mechanics are what's called one-to-one. -one. This is three-to-one. So for each pull, you get kind of three times the, the actual uh, mechanical advantage, all right? So once you've got the auto block here, run it as far down the line as you can, and then you can use that mechanical advantage to haul up. And it's amazing how much easier it is to haul up gear. The disadvantage of this is you've got to run the lower auto block uh, back down. You got you got to reset it. You can't just keep keep working it. The top one will will hold your what you've gained, but in order to get more, you got to run your other auto block down. Okay? And then get your line and haul it up. And you'd be amazed. I mean, one guy can easily, can basically free, like something free floating, he can, he can pull up a couple hundred pounds of shit pretty easy with that, that rig. All right, guys, so the next thing I'll show you is how to drop gear off of an anchor, all right? And this is a little bit safer than the, the method, methods I showed earlier, and it's still pretty gear uh, minimalist, right? You've got your anchor, obviously, and then you are gonna need uh, a carabiner and then what I'm going to show you is what is called a uh, munter's hitch so put the line in there like that okay and then you could drop gear like this but you don't have a whole lot of stopping power basically you're just going to put the munter's hitch on like that okay all right and then this is like an old school way of belaying too um, that you that uh, people use and so you can lo look online you know how to use the munter's hitch but the munter's hitch has a lot of stopping power Okay, so you know you can basically, you know, kind of work work the the gear down like that. Okay, and you have to work it through the terrain a little bit. All right, but there's a lot of lot of friction on a munter's hitch. You just pull down, it stops. The downside to it, it doesn't really matter for the applications we're talking about, but it twists your your rope your your rope real bad. Okay, all right. So that the that's the munter's hitch. All right. And that's a very, a very kind of gear minimalist way to, uh, to drop 
drop gear, okay? All right, guys, so I'm gonna show you a safer uh, version of the hip belay, okay? And it's gonna be an anchored version of the hip belay. So the first thing you have to do is you've gotta make, you've gotta improvise kind of a harness, okay? I'll show it to you guys, but just realize that it's not a real safe harness. It's, you sure as hell don't wanna fall on it, okay? It could kill you if you fall on it. It's, it, it's almost, it, it could be almost worse than just falling and hitting the ground. So you don't wanna fall on it, but you wanna use it for support, okay? If, you, if you've got tension on a, a, what's called a it's swami belt or some people call it a bowline wrap or whatever, um, if you've got tension on it, it's, it's really safe and it'll hold you. It's just you don't want to hit it with any kind of dynamic pressure, partic particularly on a static, static rope, okay? So the first thing you want to do is get a pretty good length of line and run it across your back here. And then what you're going to want to do is loop yourself at least four or five times. With a real low diameter rope like this, you might even want to do more, but, but we'll do four for demonstration purposes. And don't have them crossed and, and stuff like that. You want them to be stacked up real nice. Okay. And so those lines are what's going to hold you. And then what you want to do is you're just going to put a, you want to make sure you got just enough so it makes sense. Lines here. And then what you want to do is just put a bowl in, in the line. Okay. And then what I like to do is what's called a locking bowl in. And I'll have to take out the, my stopper knots for this. And uh, you can look this up, but basically you take the end of the bowline and there's a bar between the bite. And you can go under that and back up. And it makes the bowline just a little more, little more secure. If you're super paranoid, you can do a little, little safety knot like that, all right? Okay, so that's like your improvised improvised i hate to call it a harness but it's like an imp improvised safety device all right and it's painful like if you fall on this it's going to fucking hurt so you want to you want to be careful and i'll show you what you want to do is use your anchor to 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 make it so it's always holding you all right and the way to do that is do it do a clove hitch the nice thing about a clove hitch is you've got it on there and like see here I've got I don't want it's too loose for me so I can feed some line in here and I can snug that clove hitch up and now that that harness can hold me okay and in this scenario it's pretty damn safe because I've got my weight on it right I'm not like hitting it well you really want to avoid hitting it all right so now that you've got that, you know, this is stopped, you can hit belay something that's going to be a lot, a lot safer for you. And now you can run your hip belay with an anchor, all right? So it's a lot less dangerous because you've got that. Like if you're, if all of a sudden the gear, the mountain goat, cape and meat or whatever, um, <clears throat> hits the end of the line, it's not that big a deer, deal because it's not going to pull you down with it, okay? So you can kind of, do the same methodology, just hit belay like this, work your gear down, okay? And then if you wanna break, you can break like that, okay? Just like that. And again, better if you have somebody down there to help you, but you can always work your gear a little bit. That's always, that's gonna be limited, like the heavier you go, the harder it is to work gear down the mountain, okay? So just keep that in mind. And then again, just to mention the safety part of the hip belay, is don't let this arm collapse, okay? You get in here, you can lose your rope quick, all right? To do it, the safest is hip belay like this, so all your rope's over here, okay? In that case, you've got your, your line where you can run your gear down, you got your braking line here, and then you've got everything else out here. If you were to lose your gear, okay, like your braking arm got trapped behind you and it popped uh, over your back and you lost the line, the worst case scenario, it's gonna be, it's gonna be freaking scary, but this line's gonna pull out fast. Like it's gonna whip out and it's gonna whip to the clove hitch here. 
and it's probably gonna knock you into the dirt, but that's, that's the worst of it, right? In the case where you're not anchored on a hip belay drop, what's gonna happen is it could pull you off the mountain and kill you. So this is a lot better scenario, all right?